This is my first time in Tirana, Albania. After spending my first day interacting with locals, it was hard to see why there was such a big misconception in the UK as to why Albania is unsafe. I ended up stumbling across Lauren and Lewis and we decided to hang out for the day. Today, I meet back up with them and we head out of the city to check out an Albanian market where only locals go. Welcome to another day in Tirana, Albania. I've got the Skanderbeg statue behind me. We are starting this episode off with our traditional sunrise mission. If you are new to watching my videos, it's a tradition of mine. Every place we visit, we go out for a sunrise just because it's a little bit emptier and it makes it more preferable for photography. So yeah, if you are new around here, then you like this video, be sure to give it a little thumbs up, but let's get straight into it. In good old Kieran fashion as well. As you can see, sunrise is non-existent. It's actually raining now. We are still on the hunt for that epic sunrise in a different country. But let's get straight into it. Let's go and explore Tirana one more time. me is a bunker and there's actually two of these in Tirana they're called bunk art um, which I is quite a quite a nice name for them they're actually museums and I believe this one is an art gallery and the other one is like an actual museum of how the bunkers would be and the bunkers were built by a communist dictator Enver Hoxha I think um, just in case war ever broke out here um they were nuclear bunkers so in the event of nuclear war they would come down into these bunkers if they ever got attacked we are hoping to go inside one of them today hoping for two maybe and then yeah i mean obviously they're shut right now because it's 6 30 in the morning but we are hoping to go in them when they are open but last episode if you've missed it Go and check it out. It was an absolute crazy, crazy day for good reasons. Um, we were meant to go to the cable cars up the mountain, but we got there too late. It was shut by the time we got there. So that is what's on the agenda. First thing when they open up, gonna head up them cable cars and uh, go up the mountain. But uh, yeah, for now, we're just gonna admire the exterior of this bunk art um, and then later we're gonna go and check them out so yeah what a cool cool little spot this magnificent building. This is the Great Mosque of Tirana. Now normally I like to tell you the history about these buildings but uh, I can't with this one and the reason being is that it's still being constructed. So this is a very new mosque but once it's completed it will be the biggest mosque in all of the Balkans and you have to be here for yourself to appreciate the size of it. It is absolutely massive. It is absolutely stunning. I didn't realize like Bosnia and Herzegovina, Albania is predominantly a Muslim country. It does make sense though, because countries like Albania, Bosnia, they were all under 
the Ottoman Empire. So it's obviously very heavily influenced here. And last night when I was walking around, again, similar to Bosnia and Herzegovina, there was just a big call for prayer. And I don't think I will ever get tired of hearing that sound. That, that sound where it just drowns out the city is absolutely phenomenal. But um, maybe we'll come back to Tirana once this great mosque is finished and maybe we can check it out a little bit more. But yeah, a brand new mosque in the making. had a coffee and a quick bite to eat I'm not sure when I'll next have the opportunity to eat probably when we get down from the cable cars um, and the heavens have opened which doesn't bode well because normally some places cancel cable cars due to bad weather we had it back in Bosnia in November which was gutting um, and with it being late yesterday I'm hoping we don't miss it so we're going to meet our Albanian friend Yona now and then head to the entrance of the cable cars. Fingers crossed we can get up there. Made it! The cable cars are open. On the cable car now, I think it takes 15, 20 minutes to get up there. I'm back with Yona and this is my first ever cable car ride. <laughs> this is sick. Absolute stunning views already, although it is slightly raining, so yeah, the views still seem okay, it's not clouded over, but happy days. And we are here. That took 15, 20 minutes. That was very smooth, apart from where it went through the um, like pylon things. But first ever cable car ride completed. Let's go check out the views. What an incredible view that is. We've got the whole city of Tirana down there. And it looks a million miles away, but just 15 minutes up this cable car and you get this absolute breathtaking view. It is a little bit cold up here and it's raining a little bit, but the sun is slightly shining on the city. If you're ever in Tirana, it's worth coming up here just for that view itself. How incredible. So surrounded by beautiful mountains all around, which I believe you can hike up. So maybe I'll come back to Tirana and hike up them beautiful mountains. A little bit of low cloud up there as well. So it's, yeah, it's just beautiful. You need to come up here and see it for yourself. Okay, Yona has gone, I've gone out of the taxi to 
a weird, not a weird place, but a different part of Albania or Tirana because I have been bought here by these guys. You where ready? have you bought me? I have Midland no nowhere. idea where we are. <laughs> Wait till you get in. We're yeah. definitely amongst just locals. So like, there's no there's tourists no here at all. So it's like a, it, it looks like a market. It's a market, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, like a locals market. It's like a massive jungle sale. Awesome. Let's, uh, let's go have a look. <laughs> <laughs> if you missed yesterday's episode, I met these guys. They were actually on my plane and we got talking and we actually have a lot in common. And I'm just third wheeling again. So <laughs> we love it. <laughs> Let's go check it out. <laughs> basically like a big jumble sale there's loads of different shoes lots of different second-hand clothing I don't think that these people see many tourists here but um it's pretty cool it's a good order different kinds of shoes and then this side we've got loads of hats I could do have a new hat to be fair <laughs> small choice I don't think I would buy any second-hand underwear though that's for sure it's been cleaned. <laughs> Would you buy it then? <laughs> no. <they're not>. <laughs> <laughs> I just got told off for uh, filming by one one of the vendors, but um, yeah, this is this is 100% Albanian. No one here speaks English, so <laughs> it's great. <laughs> let's let's see if we can get told off anymore. <laughs> Over there, we have some fruit and vegetables. It's like, it's so weird. There's like so many like different clothes and shoes and that. And then you've just got one section that just sells fresh veg. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's crazy. And then Lewis was saying that they're going to an even bigger market tomorrow, which I won't be here for, but uh, I'm sure you'll enjoy the piece. We'll you. You, won't, you won't have a camera in your face every time. <laughs> <laughs> it won't get told off. Yeah. Yeah, so we're just saying that this place is quite overwhelming. There's a lot to take in. Just because there's so many things to look at and just, yeah, we've got more. <laughs> yeah, spoiled for choice. There's thousands and thousands of shoes, veg, coats, everything. But, uh, what a wonderful little market. So it just got off the bus back into Skanderbeg Square and it's raining again. And it didn't forecast rain at all this trip, but uh, there's a party under the pavilion, um, which is very interesting music. Um, but we've only got a few hours left here, so we have to make the most of it. And we're going to the Bunkart now. We're going to one of the Bunkart museums where we were this morning, but this time it's open. Um, so let's go have a look at some um, artwork, I guess. Did want to go to the other museum, but that's like three miles or an hour's walk away and we ain't got time for that. So we have to deal with what we've got, but I don't have any waterproofs and we're getting quite wet now. The rain is coming down. So we're in the bunker now, we're literally just down the stairs and uh, one of the first rooms. Had a rifle in it and I've just got loads of displays of information on. And it's crazy to think that these bunkers were built to withstand nuclear warfare. Um, it is a little bit dark, so I do apologize if the quality drops a little bit. Um, but we're doing all right, we've got this light shining on us. And uh, there's four passageways to explore so so this is kind of like a old-fashioned bodysuit to be able to withstand bites from dogs and they trained the dogs to um, chase illegal Albanians trying to cross the border uh, I'm, I'm just reading it from here so I'm, yeah but this is a old-fashioned bodysuit it's a lot thinner than what you get now I don't want to wear that and take a bite off a dog. And uh, 
Up here, we have an AK-47. Casual. With a bayonet. It's probably a fake bayonet, isn't it? Yeah. But the gun's real, I think. Heavy. Well, that is. That's crazy how heavy they are. Yeah. I think they carry that with all, like, Everything. their packs and all of that. Jeez. We just come out of the Bunkart Museum. What did we think of that? Interesting. I think it was actually better than what I was expecting. I thought yeah. it was just going to be literally a gallery of just Stuff. pictures, but there are some cool like little like relics yeah. and rooms and that, but there's four passageways in there and you can easily spend a good couple of hours reading every information yeah. board, but um, we hungry. All of us are hungry, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, prioritize food. So that is what we're doing. We're going to get food and then I don't know. Back to the cloud thing, which another tourist. Yes, we're all being tourists today. Yeah. Yesterday for you was markets and yeah. thrift shopping, and today's tourist. being a tourist. So let's get Day some two. food. <laughs> yeah. I think they should uh, start a YouTube channel. <laughs> so we've had our food now. We have takeaway coffees. Unfortunately, I've only got an hour and a half till I need to go at the airport. Oh, yeah. So I am basically acting as tour guide <laughs> for these tourists. <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're just at the pyramid that I was at yesterday. Um, so I'm just showing them, letting them climb a pyramid to say that they have climbed one. And um, I'm going to ask you two the question as well, coming from a British British perception. Yeah. Um, so obviously you, you two know that in England, Albania is, to see, is perceived as dangerous and unsafe. Mm. From your experience and when you've been here, how, how do you find it? Yeah, not like that at all. Everyone wants to be your mate. Everyone is friendly and yeah, helpful. Yeah, super friendly. And not a lot of people speak English, but... The people that do like are trying really hard to, mm. like the few that do, and then when you try and speak a bit of Albanian back, they love it. So They're so appreciative of it. So there's like a mutual friendliness there as well. It's nice. Everyone's friendly. Even if you just learn one word like thank you. Yeah. Go on, Lewis. What's thank you? Falamindari. <laughs> there you go. They just That's appreciate it yeah. so much. So yeah. My experience as well, it's been incredibly safe, no trouble at all. Apart from the kids yesterday, yeah. when we had the coffee, we was getting haggled by kids. Um, but other than that, it's been, it's been really safe. Like we were just talking to strangers on the bus. Um, and yeah, it's, it's really not dangerous at all. So yeah, we're, you recommend, yeah? We all recommend. But we're right by the pyramids. We're just gonna chill out for a bit before I sadly depart and then I can get out of these two's hairs, <laughs> but um, yeah, what a what a wild trip! It's been, it's been very unexpected yeah. meeting you two, but great at the same time. So yeah, we're just gonna chill for a bit. Made it to the top. Are you out of breath? Yes. <laughs> also, if you saw my first episode, I came here for sunrise, and this is the prime reason. How many people are there? When I was here for sunrise completely empty so if that's not motivation for you to get up at the crack of dawn and explore i don't know what is so i'm ending the video where it all started in skendem skendemberg skendemberg yeah. i forgot already kind of the, the square of tirana um yeah it's been an unreal trip mainly thanks to these two um so yesterday i asked hector a question i'm going to ask you the same thing what would you say to people watching this? Um, I would say to be open-minded with where you go and travel to. So if it's somewhere that you wouldn't necessarily think of, or like you've heard bad things about, don't be closed off to it. Like be open-minded, because I think a lot of people would be closed off to a, somewhere like this and actually have 
like had a really good time and everyone's been super friendly so yeah. don't be closed off keep an open mind yeah. Lewis start conversations with strangers yeah. start conversations yeah. with strangers because we were strangers if you've watched my Bosnian videos I said something at the very end and I said sometimes it's about the place sometimes it's about the people that really make the experience unforgettable for you and I think on this trip it's been the people yeah. this place has been unreal and Bosnia was the place and the people but this this experience has been about the people with you two and with Hector and with Yona yeah. Yeah. it's it's just been amazing and they live 45 minutes from me so you'll probably see them in another inside. video <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah thank you for watching and if you did enjoy this mashup then give us a little like and a subscribe and we'll see you in the next adventure do you do this see you next time <laughs> <laughs> see you later